I'm liking Dutch Bros over Starbucks as of late. All the younger people clapped. This is a very important one. This is non-negotiable, in my opinion. I exclusively install the toilet paper where it goes top down. Yes? Why? Because I'm not a monster, okay? Don't fight physics. Put it right there in the front. It's closer. It's easier. Accessibility. It's all good. Sometimes decisions like toilet paper, easy, easy, easy to make. We all have to make them. So here's the deal. In Go Church, over the last couple of weeks, just the last couple of weeks, I've talked to people about some big decisions. They've asked me questions about their marriage. They've asked me questions about how are they going to work with kids through a divorce that's happening now. It's very heavy, very hard. I've talked to people about decisions with housing, about money, and about relationships. But one that really stands out in my mind happened last Sunday. So last Sunday, we were praying together. We have an opportunity after we share the message and we're doing communion during worship. We'll have an opportunity to pray over here in this area of the room. And one of the folks that came over to pray is our very own Ethan Meekle. Now, Ethan attends Northfield High School. Awesome, awesome young man. Why don't you give him a nice round of applause? Very, very... Got some whistling in the crowd. I love it. So Ethan, great at sports, great at school, great, amazing, godly young man, goes to go youth, all the things. So he comes up, and I was happy to see him. And I'm like, Ethan, bro, what do you want to pray about? He's like, I just want to pray for the spring, pray for school, pray for direction with sports and school, what sports to really focus on and do, and trying to balance school and trying to be, you know, the person that God wants me to be. And I'm like, just so proud of him, you know, in that moment. Somebody in high school seeking wisdom, wanting God's will, thinking down the road. He must have some amazing parents, right? He must have some amazing parents, really, is what I think. So we're praying, and we're praying about direction, we're praying about sports, we're praying about all the things, and it was, it was so good to pray together. Those two questions are really important to Ethan last week and probably this week. So I want you to think about if you could get guidance. Think about the big decision that you have coming up. Maybe it's a difficult talk at work. Maybe it's a challenging conversation you need to have with your kiddo or your husband or wife. Maybe it is something that you've got to decide with housing in the future or investments and money, business, your team. Are you going to develop somebody? Are you going to terminate somebody? Are you going, what are you going to do? Think about this. We have an opportunity over the next three weeks. This series, What's Next, was inspired by the prayer that Ethan and I shared last week. So we're just going to turn it into a three-week series and talk about how can we make good, godly, wise decisions. Where do we start? What are some very practical tools? So today we're laying foundation, and then we're going to get into practical implementation next week and the week after. So everybody say next week. Come on, everybody say next week. next week. I want you to be here. Elbow somebody next to you and say, be here next week. Be here next week. I don't want you to miss out on next week. I'm going to be here next week. So think about the next decision that you need to make. Let's make it in an amazing, godly way, which brings us to the one big thing. I want you to grab your pen, write this down on your communication card. I was really thinking about this and praying about this moment of the message. I felt like God wanted to say something to us. This is not a quote. This is not something from somewhere else. I just felt like this is for us, for today, and it really needs to sink into our heart. So let's look at this and write this down together. The purity of your heart leads to the clarity of your path. Let that sink in for a minute. The purity of your heart leads to the clarity of your path. And I want us to get off on the right foot. I want us to have a good, strong start to the series. So I want us to make sure and get some things right 
to remember that God cares more about your character than he does your career. He cares more about your integrity than your investments. He cares more about the inside than the outside. God sees your heart. God sees the inside of you. And you know what I think he does? I think he smiles. He doesn't get mad. He doesn't want to beat you down. He believes in you. He's given everything for you to know him. He's an amazing, gracious God. And he believes in your ability to hear his voice. Every single one of us. Not just the spiritually elite or not just the people who have been following Jesus for 30 plus years. But to be able to recognize that still small but powerful voice even before we believe in Jesus, right? I mean, after all, how does it work? The Holy Spirit of God draws us to God pulling us in, helping us understand our need for God. So even before we say, okay, yes, God, I'm going to follow you, we kind of hear that, that tugging, that pulling. We feel that magnetic pull of the Spirit in our life. We're starting to listen and hear even before we start following. I want you to think about making the best godly decisions that you've ever made. Think about making them this month, next month, the month after. I want us to get into the why behind the what. Now, here's the deal. Most people, most of us here, we tend to focus more on doing. At least I do like doing things for God. My activities. I look at the list. I'm church. I'm small group. I've got devotional life. I'm trying to be a good person. I'm trying to help this person. You know, you think about the things you do. Sometimes we can walk with God so long that we just boil our relationship with God down to stuff on a to-do list. So it's like, check, 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 check. I feel good about myself. Let's move on and do the stuff that's really important. And it gets stale. And it gets boring. Which is the opposite of what it's supposed to be. I want us to think about not just doing. Doing is important. But where does the doing come from? It comes from being, not faking it. But I want us to think about being over doing. Instead of just focusing on doing good things, becoming godly people. Because after all, that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's not what we do. It's who we become that really makes the difference. So getting started on this, I want us to understand that God begins on the inside. He starts on the inside, not the outside. Now, people ask me about the outside issues of life a lot. Pastor Nick, what do you think about, what does God have to say about drinking? What does God have to say about drinking too much? What does God have to say about CSU versus CU? You know what he says. I don't need to tell you. Becky said the Rams. He said go Rams. He starts on the inside, but people ask me about outside stuff all the time. What does God think about marijuana? What does God think about sex? What does God think about, um, does it matter who I have sex with? Does this stuff matter? These are all outside issues, outside of of the internal part of us, things that we do, things that you can see, behaviors that we engage in. The conversation is important. So I'm not blowing off the question, but I don't think it's the most important. I don't think God starts on the outside and says, here's what I need you to do. I need you to stop cussing. I need you to stop chewing. I need you to stop doing all this crazy stuff. I need you to start. And then we can talk. After you fix all that stuff. That's not how God works. God works from the inside to the outside. But so many times all culture works from the outside to the inside. You've got to look a certain way, talk a certain way, behave a certain way for you to hear from God, be a godly person. But it's possible, I think, to look great on the outside and be kind of stinky and gross on the inside. So check this out. This is Matthew 23, 25. Remember, inside, outside, inside, outside. 
the purity of my heart leads to the clarity of my path. This is Jesus talking to religious professionals, okay? These are people who should get it. I want you to understand that Jesus never got upset with people who shouldn't get it. People who really needed help, people who needed love, people who did not really understand God. Jesus didn't get mad at them or frustrated, but he got upset with people who should get it. But they didn't get it. So here you see him upset, and he's calling it how he sees it. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites, exclamation, not like hypocrites, period, not hypocrites, hypocrites, exclamation point. Watch this. For you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy full of greed and self-indulgence, you blind Pharisee. First wash the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will become clean too. Do you tend to focus more on the outside or the inside of other people? The outside or the inside of your own self? Think about these things today. Outside, inside, inside, outside. The purity of my heart connects to the direction of my life. It's possible, according to this scripture, to look good and do all the right things on the outside, but be gross on the inside. And Jesus hates that. He hates it not when you don't know, but he hates it when you act like you know, but on the inside you don't know. Hypocrisy is what drives him crazy. He can't stand it. And so he says this with an exclamation point. It's the idea, you see this in other areas of Scripture, where Jesus talks about what you say and the words that come out of your mouth. He's like, it's not just the words that you say that make you good or bad. The words come from someplace. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you might not have a language problem or a mouth problem. You might have a heart condition. It's coming from somewhere. The inside matters. If you take care of the inside, if it's a heart issue, you get your heart right, other things will start to change. Other things will come under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Your language will, your behavior will, the way that you treat other people will. But you got to start from the inside and let it move its way to the outside. Remember, inside, outside, direction. we got to get some things right first. Got to build a foundation first. So back to this outside issue. When we were doing college student ministry, college students all the time, they would want to talk about boyfriend, girlfriend stuff, money, direct, God's direction. And then they would want to talk about girlfriend, boyfriend, money, God's direction, then making out boyfriend, girlfriend, sexuality, direction, money. Just a mix of the same stuff over and over and over again. So I'll get all kind of crazy questions. Does it matter? I mean, we're not having like all the way sex. Does it count? You know, can we, how far can I go is basically the question. Like, Pastor Nick, where, where can I draw the line but then bump? I want to nudge it, man. I want to test the strength. The, what's the tensile strength of that line? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push on it and see what happens. But many times we operate like this. Like, what things of God do I really need to do? And what things are really not a big deal? Where's the line? What's the bare minimum? You know, what, what's, what's kind of the minimum I have to do to be okay? When the kingdom of God doesn't really work that way. So instead of thinking, okay, where's the line? Can I push it? When people are talking about sexuality, human sexuality, who they're making out with, who they want to make out with, if they're being faithful to husband and wife, same-sex attraction, heterosexual attraction, all things human sexuality. You think, how far can I go? What's the line? I'm going to share with you the line. Here's the line that Jesus draws. This is Matthew 5, 27. You've heard the commandment that says you must not commit adultery. Now, what is adultery? It's a physical act, right? You are with someone. Somebody is cheating. 
on a husband or a wife. You must not commit adultery. This is a physical act. And then Jesus blows everybody's brains apart with this next statement, okay? He says, but I say, anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. The conversation about how far can I go, how much can we kiss, or can clothes come off, can, how far can I go? Jesus says, here's how far you can go, here. It's not, even, it's not even touching anything. It's not even, well, it's okay. We just kind of flirt at the office, touchy-touchy, huggy-huggy. You know, it's not a huge deal. It's not even to that place. It's here. If you're thinking about them, if you're imagining about a situation, if you see somebody and like, mm-hmm, yep, you're dwelling on it. That's why God gave men a neck. You can just turn. Just turn the head. Just turn it like this. You don't have to look. You don't have to dwell. But do you see the emphasis? It's on the inside. They're saying, you can do whatever, right? Just don't have adultery with other people. That's the law. That's the bare minimum. Don't do that. She said, oh, no, no, no. You want the line? Back it way, way, way up. Back it up to, I can't even touch you. That's what he's talking about. So heterosexual, same-sex attraction, it doesn't matter what kind of relationship it is. It's what's in the inside that matters first and I believe most. It starts here. It starts here. And then it comes out here. It comes from someplace. Not to be like, not to be like our culture. Romans 12.1. And so, dear brothers and sisters... Now, I want to back up. I want to lay a little bit more groundwork here. Let's back up. I want to do this scripture. Let's do 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, Michael, if you would. Here's God's will for your life. You know what it is? This is what it is. God's will is for you to make a lot of money. God's will is for you to be extremely successful. And God's will is for you to be the best teacher on the planet. God's w- this is his will for you, is to be holy. In our minds, a lot of times we just put like occupation or marriage status or some kind of activity that we do. You know, we're wise, we're smart, we do these things. But he's saying, no, 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 I want you, my will for you is to be holy. That's the first and most important thing. And if you're that, every other thing will work out. If your heart's right, your mouth will be right. If your mind is right, guess what? Your steps will be right. The purity of my heart leads to the clarity of my path. It doesn't start with the foot. God, where do you want me to go? It starts here and it starts here. God, I want to be like you. I want to want what you want. I want to hate What you hate. And God hates things. He hates injustice. He hates sin. He hates evil. God, help me to be like you. And out of that syncing up with God and the Holy Spirit, I'll tell you what, walking it out is way, way easier when the inside is right. So much harder to miss God's will than it is to find it. God's will for you is to be holy. So let's dig a little bit deeper. This word holy, in other translations, you'll see the word sanctified. And on your communication card, write this out. This is the definition. Just write the word sanctified in there. The act of becoming more personally dedicated to God, especially by becoming more distinct, devoted, or morally pure. When you give your life to Christ, you have a moment of belief. You're forgiven, man. You can't get more forgiven. You're just forgiven. The power of the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. It's a theological idea called regeneration where you are transformed on the inside. Come on, somebody. God doesn't make us bad to good. He makes us from death to life. That's what God does in our life. You can't get more transformed than you already are. But it doesn't stop there. So let's say today you have been searching. You give your life to Christ. 
you're regenerated from the inside out. Your sins are washed away. The Holy Spirit is living inside of you. That's not the end of your journey. That's the beginning of this new life. And it leads to the next steps of this. I'm walking closer, man. I'm running harder. I'm pushing in. I'm inclining my heart more and more and more towards God. Things that you feel challenged to start or stop now, your first day, will be different from things you're challenged to start or stop in year 18. That's called walking out your faith. From the inside to the outside, inside to the outside. Purity of your heart leads to the clarity of your path. Romans 12, 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he's done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. You see that theme of holiness again. To be holy, set apart, different, sanctified. Set aside for something different. Get the idea, if you're old school, you grew up in an old school house, and there was like a china cabinet. How many of you had a mom or grandma that had a china cabinet? A china cabinet? So the rule as a kid was what? Don't touch the, don't touch the china. Don't you do it. Because it only is used for very special occasions, right? I remember breaking out. I go into the cabinet, and I take a big bowl, fancy bowl. What, what for? Eat cereal. It was like the biggest bowl that I could see with my, uh, big bowl, boom, pull it out. And man, my mom came down. She said, what are you doing? It's six made for eating. <laughs> no, it's not. It's made for looking and occasionally eating. But you don't just pull the china out for whenever you want, right? It's not your everyday plate. It's set aside for something special. And you are not just some ordinary little plate Ordinary little cup, ordinary little piece of silverware. You have been made by God. You have been changed by God. And God has a plan and a future for your life. Do you believe that, Go Church? You're not ordinary. You're a child of the King. We're all here. We all struggle with different temptations. Let me tell you this. You are not your desires. Just because you feel it doesn't mean you should do it. Just because you're attracted to it doesn't mean that's what I should do. Becky and I have been married for 23 years. I am attracted to women, heterosexual. Does that mean that, well, I should just live out my desires and go cheat on my wife with the next person that I'm attracted to because that's just how I feel? That's just what I want? That's my truth for my life, and I've got to obey my desires, or I'm lying to myself. No! We are all tempted, but we are not our desires. We are children of God. Everyone is tempted in different ways, the different things. And God always provides a way out, and you will never be crushed or trapped by temptation. William Barclay, Bible commentator, writes this about Romans 12, 1 and 2. He says, here we have a most significant thing. True worship is the offering to God of one's body and all that one does every day with it. Real worship is not the offering to God of liturgy, however noble, and ritual, however magnificent. Real worship is the offering of everyday life to Him. Not something carried out in a church, but something which sees, watch this, look at this. Something that sees the whole world as the temple of the living God. We come here to express our belief, to express our faith, to learn about God, the Word of God, to pray for each other, lift each other up, burdens and rejoicing together, all of that. But man, if a Sunday morning is the only touch point, you're missing out. He's, God has designed it to be so much more fun and real and intimate and personal. Where today is a celebration of some things that God's done Monday through Saturday. We rejoice about it on a Sunday. Meant to be growing on the inside. God bringing it to the outside. If your heart is right, your words will be right.
I want you to hear this today. I wrote this down. I want to say it. We shouldn't chart our course before we check our heart. How much time have you been praying about the next thing when you should be praying, God, would you shine your light on my heart? How's my heart? Do I trust you? Are my motivations good? Do I want to make a change for the right reason? Or is it just my selfishness, little flesh wheel part of me that just wants to do something because it wants to do something? It might not even be bad, but sometimes the greatest enemy to God is good. It doesn't have to be evil. Examine your heart. It brings us to an actionable step, and I want you to write this down. This is our one big action. How do I make this work in my life? Write this down. I will do a heart exam. I'm going to do a heart exam. Before I look for direction, I'm going to look for purity. Before I focus on the path, I'm going to focus on purity of heart. Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You remember what we've read already? If you even look at a person and lust after them, you've already committed adultery with them in your heart. So on the inside, on the inside, on the inside. Don't just clean the outside of the cup. Make sure the inside is clean as well. Clean the inside and the outside will be clean. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then, everybody in the house, say the word then. Then. Do you see the pattern? You do these things. You get all the inside right. You offer your life as a living sacrifice. You're intimate and real with God. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Before we focus on the path, let's focus on purity. How is our heart? How's your heart? Write this down somewhere. From transformation, we sense God's timing. Ethan, can you come up here and help me out here for a second? This is my son, Ethan. Give him a nice round of applause, please. He didn't know he was going to be on stage today. So let's say that Ethan and I are, we're walking. So we're walking on the path, right? And we're talking. Yeah, we're talking. We are. And we're walking our dog a little wicked, right? We're walking and we're walking and we're walking. Have you ever walked a dog with a spouse or, or a person and you didn't realize the person was 30 feet back? And like the dog is taking a poo and you're just walking like 30, 40, 50 feet down the path? What, what happens when you're walking with somebody and you're talking, you, you hear it, you sense the presence, right? But if, if Ethan stops talking and so do I, I can just keep going. I'm like, uh-huh, now I can't believe that. Yeah, about that workout you were talking about getting swole, doing the tries and the buys and the quads and what? Hold up, I didn't know you were way back there. When you stop talking, you lose connection. You lose proximity. And you don't even realize it. How many of us have been doing that with God? We're walking together, and then you stop talking, or you stop listening, and you start drifting. Ethan, you can have a seat, thank you. And you start drifting. You get busy. Things distract you. And you just get sidetracked. And silence has defined the relationship. I want you to check your heart today. I want to give you four questions. And actually, on your communication card, under the Make It Work section in the bottom, I want you to take this home, and I want you to think about these four questions. Here's the first one. It will evaluate your heart, the purity of your heart. Do I minimize my sin and shortcomings? Think about it like this. I see my sin is no big deal, but other people's sin is a huge issue. Kind of the point the finger, but we won't look at ourselves. Another question, am I reluctant to admit I'm wrong? A proud person has lots of excuses. Do I use others? Are people a means to getting what I want? 
And the last one, am I devastated or angered by criticism? Criticism tests whether we really believe we are perfect or not. If we recognize our flaws, we won't be surprised when others do. So today, here's my challenge to you. Many, many times in our spiritual walk, if you're a believer in Jesus, this is what we want God to give us. The compass. We want to know where. We want to know how. We want to know how many degrees God's will is leading this, this is the way. This is the way. I'm going to walk I'm going to walk this way. This is what we want from God, His direction. We pray about this so much, and it's not bad to pray about. But instead of reaching for this first, we should reach for this first. That before I go for the compass, God, examine my heart. Are my desires even pure? Is what I'm wanting even from you? God, give me the desires of your heart. Help me to want what you want. You're thinking about moving? You better pray, God, what do you want? Thinking about a job change? God, what do you want? Thinking about a relationship change? God, make your decision, your passion alive in me. What do you want? Is my heart in a place to receive direction? And believers in the house, I want to take the pressure off of you. If you really love Jesus, you're submitted to him, your devotional life is real. It's a lot harder to miss his will than it is to find it. He's got you. He's got you. He's never going to let you down. You love God, you're submitted to him. You're not going to get six years off course. We all do some mid-course corrections in life. And I'm telling you, the closer you walk to God, like I was walking with Ethan, if we're close, I tell you what, when we're talking, the minute it gets a step or two apart, I'm like, oh, hold on a minute. I need, to, I need to come back closer. It's getting hard to hear you. And you walk with God, and that's the journey. Like when you're walking with somebody, you know, they're leading, you just follow them. You're not worried, do I take a left? Do, I, do we miss a left? Do I take a right? Do I, do, should we go back here? Just, you just follow the person. That's how it is with God. Just follow him. One step after another, after another, after another, leads to a life. Live for him leads to a life of well done, my good and faithful servant. The purity of your heart, it leads to the clarity of your path. Start heart first. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for every single one of my friends, my family here today. Your kids, this is your church. God, we're a part of your kingdom. Christians, I want you to hear me in the house. As I was thinking about this moment, God dropped a scripture into my heart. It's Proverbs 3, 5. And hear me. It says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge God in all of your ways. And then he will direct your path. The path is after trusting. The path is after submitting. The purity of your heart leads to direction. God, help us to e expose and open up our heart to you. Every follower of Jesus, I want you to hear me. It's, this is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. This is a moment to say, God, in my journey of sanctification, in my journey of continuing to become the man, the woman that you want me to be, what do I need to do next? What do I need to start? What do I need to stop? How should I incline my mind? Do a motive check. Help us to see. If you're here today, and it's been a long, long time since you've had a real relationship with Jesus, maybe you never have. I want to speak hope and life. This is the good news for you today. We don't have to live apart from God. The good news is that God sent his one and only son, that we can be connected, to have a real relationship with the Holy Father. If we believe that Jesus and the life that he lived was the perfect life, and when, they, when he laid that life down on the cross for us, that he paid the bill of our sin, my mistakes, your mistakes. And as we believe in that, believe that God raised him from the dead after three days, 
You can be transformed, saved, changed, known to know him. If you're here today and you want to make Jesus the Lord and the leader of your life, I want you to pray this prayer with me out loud. Pray this, Jesus, thank you for speaking to my heart. I ask that you would forgive me of every sin. I'm making you the Lord and the leader of my life, and I'm going to live for you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen.